This video runs through the basics of the practical where you are investigating digestive activity in germinating seeds. All the practicals are part of section B and so are really worth revising. Before you start going into the details of the practical, try to get your head around what it's about. So germination is the regrowth of the embryo plant following dormancy. And to regrow or to grow, you need two things. You need raw materials and you need energy. These are both requirements for growth. Where do these things come from? They come from food. And so digestion has to happen in the seeds to break down the food into usable forms so that they can be used to provide the energy and also the raw materials for growth. So in this practical, we used broad bean seeds. Broad bean seeds are non-endospermic. They don't have an endospermic maturity. And so the food is stored in the cotyledons. So this is a basic diagram of a broad bean seed. You can see the plumule, which is going to turn into the shoots, the radical, which will grow into the roots. And then you can see the two cotyledons where the food is stored and also the tough testa, the outer coating. So in the cotyledons are food reserves and these food reserves are carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. And for this practical, we're particularly interested in the carbohydrates, the starch reserves. So there is starch stored in the cotyledons and this starch is going to be broken down firstly into maltose and then into glucose. And it's going to be broken down by enzymes, digestive enzymes that become activated inside the seed. In particular, we're interested in the action of amylase, an enzyme that breaks down starch into maltose. So let's run through the practical now. So we used four broad bean seeds. The four seeds were placed into a beaker of distilled water overnight. This softens the testa, allows water to enter and breaks dormancy. And it's really important to note that when dormancy is broken, the digestive enzymes are activated inside the seed. The control for this practical was that two of the seeds, half of the seeds, were boiled for 10 minutes. Boiling kills the seeds and so in these two dead seeds there will be no enzyme activity. So after this, all four of the seeds were cut in half using a backed blade and then all of the halves were put into a beaker that contained mild disinfectant. This is very important because this kills any microorganisms which might be on the surfaces of those seed halves. Additional precautions were also taken in the lab. The benches were cleaned thoroughly with disinfectant solution and this is also to prevent contamination by microorganisms. So then we obtained two Petri dishes, two sterile Petri dishes, and inside these Petri dishes was a growth medium called agar. But this agar was very special because it had a nutrient added to it. Starch had been added to the agar. So it's very important that you recall that starch was the nutrient added to this agar. We have done everything possible up to now to ensure that we do not introduce microorganisms into our sterile Petri dishes. So another precaution is that when we're transferring the seeds, we use aseptic technique. This means that we flame the forceps. This kills any microorganisms on the surface of the forceps and these are used to handle the seeds. And we do not open the lid of the Petri dish fully. We open it slightly at an angle and very quickly apply the seeds into the Petri dish. So using aseptic technique, you're going to position your seed halves with the cut face onto the starch agar and very quickly close up the agar dish. So you will have one Petri dish with the live seed halves and you will have another Petri dish with the boiled seeds, those seeds that are now dead. So with the lids firmly secured, you place them into an incubator. Remember also to label your dishes live and dead. Very important that you can tell the difference. So when ready, place them in the incubator, set the incubator at anything between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius and leave them for a few days. So after a few days, remove both your Petri dishes from the incubator, open them up and remove the seeds. You're then going to flood both Petri dishes with iodine solution. And it's really important that you use the term flood. In the plate that contained the live seeds, there should be four white patches directly where the seeds were positioned. This shows that there is no starch present in these four patches because they did not turn blue black, which means that those digestive enzymes broke down the starch and that's why it tested negative. So there was digestive activity in this dish. In the dish that contained the dead seeds, the whole plate turned blue black. And you must say the whole plate. It's very specific about that. So the whole plate turned blue black, which meant that there was no enzyme activity in any of these seeds. So the dead seeds had no enzyme activity. And this is why there was starch present on the whole plate. So the best way to get ready for this section of the exams is just to do the exam questions. It really is. So use your textbooks. Best of luck.